Friends, I welcome you to my channel. Before listening to this story, I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. Heavy Rain stopped Ray's golf game right after it started. He and the rest of his foursome stayed outside the clubhouse for a while to see if the rain would stop, but it became clear that it would not. He was disappointed because he really enjoyed playing, and it was the best source of physical activity for the week. Of course, his activity was not limited only to heart disease. At 64, such activities would have been limited anyway. He was still in good shape. He watched what he ate and still did most of the work in the courtyard of the modest house he shared with his wife Josie, with whom he had lived for 40 years. So Ray found himself walking in his door a little after 9 a.m., not at 12.30 or so as he usually returned home. He did not warn his wife about his early arrival. He did not see the need for this and had never done it before when something like this happened. He would just explain when he came home. But he quickly forgot about why he came earlier as soon as he opened the front door. And I forgot because his wife was standing there in the hallway. She was wearing a pink silk robe, but it was unbuttoned in front. In itself, this would not have raised questions, but in this form, she was escorting a man younger than their daughter to the front door. At 59, Josie was still a very attractive woman. She wore shoulder-length, dark brown hair. As expected of middle-aged women, her ass and belly had gained some weight over the years, but it didn't matter to Ray, and apparently it didn't matter to this guy either. Ray noticed the disheveled hair on Josie's head. She looked up when he walked through the door, and instead of the guilty, shy look he expected, she smiled, as always, expressing her happiness that he was home. Then, to his surprise, she came forward to greet him. Hi, honey, you came home early. Josie moved to kiss him, but Ray managed to quickly pull his head away. His wife looked at him in confusion. Are you out of your mind, Josie? It's better not to know where your mouth was, although I have a pretty good idea of where it was, explained Ray. Josie looked back at the young man, seemingly oblivious to his presence, and realizing what she had almost done. Oh, Ray, of course, I'm sorry. Honey, this is Luke. Luke, this is my husband, Ray. Luke was perhaps a little shorter than Ray's 183 centimeters, but he had the well-developed physique of an active young man in his 20s and 30s. He was probably an athlete in college, and maybe he is now. He had dark brown hair cut short, and a plain face, neither handsome nor ugly. He stepped forward and his hand landed on Ray's shoulder. Ray was tempted to respond physically, but held back for now. Nice to meet you. Josie has told me a lot about you. And don't worry, I'm sure in 25 or 30 years I'll have the same hardware problem as you, and I hope I'll take it as calmly as you do. Of course, what he missed most was making love to Josie. He and Josie maintained a love life as best they could, relying on Ray's fingers and tongue and actively using toys. In response to Luke's slight smile, Ray bared his teeth. Who was this asshole to treat him so condescendingly? But he didn't want to go to jail, so he restrained his ardor again. Luke, get out of my house, and if I catch you in it again, one of us will leave in a body bag, and I have a gun. The slight smile suddenly disappeared from Luke's face. He took a step back and then walked around Ray and headed for the front door. Hey, that's cool, man. I got the impression that you don't mind. Ray locked the door after it closed, took a quick look at his wife, and headed to his bedroom. He was incredibly angry and puzzled that his wife didn't seem to be remorseful or even worried about what had just happened. She entered the room shortly after him. He noticed that her robe was already buttoned up. Well, that was rude. Ray turned to her, not believing that she saw flaws in his behavior after what she had just done. He wasn't going to talk to her right now, but it was already over the line. Was that rude? I walk into my own house and see you walking some guy to the door who obviously just made love to and I was rude. You're really out of your mind. Josie's face softened. She went up to him and tried to put her hand on her husband's shoulder, but he pulled away as soon as he felt her touch. Honey, I'm sorry, but it's been so long. What we were doing was good and I enjoyed it, but it just doesn't satisfy my needs. Perhaps it would be nice to share this information with me. Where did you find this guy? He's a friend of Marjorie's. A friend? Why, he's half her age. And she was a single woman at the time. When she met Oscar, she rejected him. But we talked about him and she gave me his information. Do you realize that he's just using you? Actually, he explained that he likes older women, Josie replied. When he was 18, his mother forced him to help the women next door around the house. Some of them couldn't afford to pay much. He says he got to the point where women his age didn't suit him. 
And even if he's just using me for bed, I'm doing the same thing, so what's the difference? How long has this been going on? Ray asked. A few months. When you go to play golf, he comes and takes care of me. He doesn't stay long, and I'll clean everything up before you get back. It won't affect you in any way. You get your exercises, and I get mine, so to speak. Ray suddenly understood why Saturday had become bed linen change day. Well, I don't care if you think it's none of my business just because I'm not here. I won't accept it, and I'll give up golf if I have to. Raymond, please, be reasonable about it. You need your golf game. It's the only physical activity you have. And I have needs that need to be met, and that can be taken care of at the same time. It makes sense. Maybe for you, Josephine, but not for me. That was the last time. With that, Ray went into his bedroom to take a shower and change into something more casual. Josie went into the closet to put on some clothes, then left the house and drove a few miles to the house where Kristen lived with her husband and two daughters, Josie's granddaughters. By the time Ray showered and dressed, the house was empty. There was no note, so he decided that his wife just wanted to get away from him. That suited him fine because he wanted the same thing. The shower calmed him down, and he tried to reason logically. He could understand that Josie still had needs, but this was too much. He would never have done what she did if their positions had been reversed and he didn't feel like he had crossed the line. She'll just have to put up with it. The next day Sunday was July 4th, and all the relatives gathered at the dinner table and then gathered again in the evening to go to a large public park for fireworks. This tradition has existed since Kristen was a child, and Ray looked forward to it every year. In the morning, Ray started preparing the meat. He pickled chicken and hamburgers and laid out hot dogs for the younger children who would join them at the celebration. By the time the guests started arriving, everything was ready, and Ray was looking forward to spending time with his family. The barbecue went smoothly. There were a lot of friends there, and Josie looked radiant, smiling and laughing. He was upset, of course, that he had caught her with another man. But she had been a wonderful wife for four decades, and that was something he could forgive. This time. When the guests started to leave the house, Ray excused himself and went to take a nap. Heart failure was limiting his stamina, and he wanted to be ready to enjoy the fireworks tonight. He kissed his wife on the cheek, made it clear to her that he was going to lie down for a while, and headed for the bedroom. When the alarm went off a couple of hours later, he felt full of energy. The rest had done him good, and now he could safely enjoy the fireworks. He changed into clean clothes and went into the living room. His closest relatives were sitting around the dining table. His wife was at the far end, his granddaughters, 19-year-old Julia and 17-year-old Allison, were on the right. Kristen's husband, Eric, sat on the side, and Kristen herself stood in front of the table closest to Ray. Ray's son, Leo, and his wife, Rebecca, were sitting on the other side of the table, opposite Julia and Allison. They were all looking at him. Ray immediately realized that this was an intervention. What's the matter? His daughter, Kristen, was obviously a representative of the group. We wanted to talk to you about mom. Ray looked at his wife, but her expression was impassive. He hoped it wasn't what he thought it was. He looked at his daughter again. What about mom? Mom told us about Luke. She told me, didn't she? Ray asked incredulously. Yes, and about your problems. Ray just stared at his wife, shocked that she would share such personal information with anyone, let alone their children and grandchildren. My problems, like the whole story, do not concern you. But mom's happiness is our business. So you're unhappy? Ray asked, addressing his wife directly. Yes, Ray, I'm happy. Please don't think that's not the case, Josie replied. But she has needs, Dad, her daughter chimed in. And well, it's not something you can take care of. I mean, it's true, isn't it? So you think I'm being unreasonable? Is it selfish not to agree to this? We're not trying to label it, Dad. We just... Look, all we want to say is that since you can't do this, we think you should be more supportive of the fact that mom quietly took care of it herself. Ray looked around at the members of his family. Each of them supported, or at least seemed to support, the fact that his wife was allowed to cheat on him. He might not have changed physically, but in those few seconds, Ray felt that he had aged 20 years mentally and emotionally. He had never felt like such a useless old man as he did now. And, he said with difficulty, do you all think so? He looked them all in the eye, and they nodded in agreement. But Ray thought it was too easy for someone to just agree. He wanted to make sure of this as completely as possible. Leo, do you agree with this? 
Ray asked, looking into his son's eyes. Yes, I mean it wouldn't be with you, his son replied. And it will help mom. Eric, Ray asked, turning to his brother, in-law, Kristen's husband. Ray had never seen him go against his wife, and he certainly didn't expect him to start doing it now. I don't think that's going to be a big problem, Ray. Rebecca, Ray said, catching the eye of his sister-in-law, who seemed to be almost hiding behind Leo. Oh, Dad, I'm not really, she said, trying to evade the question. Ray always found it interesting that even after 20 years, Eric continues to call him by his first name, while Rebecca almost immediately began calling him Dad. Nonsense, Rebecca. You've been a part of this family for three years now. Besides, you're a grown woman, and I'd be interested to know your opinion. Well, it seems that everything will be fine. I mean, as long as she's careful and reserved. And finally, it came to his granddaughters. They belonged to a completely different generation, so he suspected that they had a completely different attitude to this issue. Infidelity in marriage seemed commonplace, almost expected these days, but he still wondered if they would make a choice against him. They spent so many wonderful hours together. He often attended their performances and constantly pampered them at the mall. Would they really mind? What about you girls? Oh, Grandpa, we shouldn't be involved in this. Come on, you're both adults. Well, almost, and I'm sure you have some thoughts. Julia and Allison looked at each other, then at Mom and Dad, who seemed to be urging them to speak out. At that moment, Ray realized what they were going to say. Whether they believed it or not, Mom had clearly convinced them to speak out in favor of Grandma. Well, I mean, said Julia, the eldest, a lot of our friends are okay with their boyfriends and girlfriends dating other people. Ah, a rallying cry for the infidels. Ray assumed that at some point it would come out, and so it did, although he was surprised that it took so long. Ray suddenly realized that it was pointless to argue. She will most likely find a way to do this regardless of his opinion or feelings. Everything that was before is gone, and it will never come back. He looked at Josie, who was looking at him expectantly. That's it, Josephine. The majority rule. I think you'll get what you want. His wife's face lit up, as if her dearest wish had been fulfilled, and perhaps it was. Ray just turned around and walked to the front door. He had only walked a few feet before he heard his wife's voice calling his name. He hoped that maybe she changed her mind after seeing how it affected him and turned to face her but that didn't happen. Can I tell Luke that you were just joking about the body bag? Of course, whatever you say. I'm going for a ride. But Dad, Leo exclaimed, it's time to go to the fireworks. Go without me, Ray replied. I don't want to go anymore. It was quiet when Ray left through the front door, but as soon as the door closed, he heard the sounds of rejoicing. He looked back through the front window. The blinds were open and the curtains were hanging out, and saw Josie being hugged by all her supporters. It looks like they were in this together, against him. Before the mini holiday was over, Josie was already on the phone to her lover. She would have assured him that she and Ray had discussed everything, and he had withdrawn his objections. She wanted to make sure that he hadn't gone to another woman, and that she could still expect his visit on Saturday morning. He picked up the phone on the third ring, and assured Josie that he would come and was looking forward to it. With these words, the family boarded the car and went to watch the always impressive city fireworks. They talked and laughed, glad that the trouble was behind them, and confident that Ray would be all right, that he would understand that this would not affect anything. At the very moment when Eric was parking the car, ironically, Ray's absence from the holiday allowed them to take one seven, cedar car, rather than two separate ones, which made them a family, and him an outsider, although no one noticed this connection. Ray was sitting alone in his car, admiring the view of the, the city. He found this road to the nearby hills many years ago and came here when he needed to think. He was hurt by the support Josie received from all family members. He thought that at least one of them would admit that his inability to perform his duties was not the reason for his wife's infidelity, but they were united against him, and it hurt. He felt like an outsider, as if he was old and had been fired. It reminded him of stories he had heard as a child about how some communities sent their elders to certain death when they thought they were too old or infirm to contribute, and thus simply took away resources. He just got in the way and they kicked him out. All he wanted to do now was sleep, but daytime sleep was in the way. It was after midnight when he finally returned to the house. He noticed that his daughter's car was still parked here with Josie's car, but everyone else had already left. 
He assumed that the sound of the alarm that the car was locked alerted the inhabitants of the house because the front door opened at his approach. It was Josie. Where have you been? I was so worried. Ray just walked past his wife without saying a word. He noticed that his daughter was sitting on the couch and looking at him with interest. Why are you here? He asked. Mom got worried when you weren't there after the fireworks. Everyone else needs to be somewhere tomorrow morning, so I stayed with her. You could at least answer the phone. Ray looked at his phone and remembered that he had turned it off when he arrived in the hills. He didn't want to be disturbed. Well, as you can see, I'm fine. You can go home. Kristen was stunned. Her father was the kindest and most polite man she knew, and she had never heard him talk like that to anyone, much less to her, his little daughter. She watched him go to his bedroom until the door closed between them, then picked up her purse from the table and kissed her mother goodbye. By the time Josie finished cleaning the house and went into the room, Ray was already asleep. It was cool in the house for the next week. Josie knew that despite her tacit agreement, Ray wasn't thrilled with what she was doing to Luke. But she believed that he would be able to put up with it because he loved her, and she was sure that eventually he would forget about it, or at least put it out of his mind. For Ray, it was the complete destruction of his life. He has been a devoted family man for four decades, but that didn't stop his entire family from throwing him aside when his presence became inconvenient. The simple fact that Josie even sought support from her family in connection with the betrayal put an end to his marriage, as Ray believed. The fact that all of them, every single one of them, turned against him was a fatal blow to his family, or at least to the fact that he was a part of it. He's been putting everyone else first for years. Now everything had to change. As he has every Saturday morning for the past few years, Ray got in his car and drove to the country club to meet his foursome. It was a group of eight older men who reserved two halves in a row and then mixed fours every week. Ray tried his best to focus on the game, knowing what was going on in his house, and he had no doubt what was going on. It wasn't his worst performance, but it was his worst in a long time. He tried to smile at the good-natured taunts, but it wasn't easy. Meanwhile, Josie, staying at home, watched Ray get into the car and leave for a golf game at 7 o'clock in the morning. She tried to express her affection and kiss him goodbye, but he remained silent and barely allowed her to press her lips to his cheek. It was unpleasant for her to realize that her husband had been hurt, but she put it out of her mind as soon as Luke pulled up to the footpath. She asked him to park down the street and around the corner. It seemed to her that parking in front of the house would be too provocative and would attract the attention of the neighbors. But there was nothing to be done about the fact that he would come to the door. She let him knock before opening the door and then invited him in. She was wearing only a bathrobe and nothing else, and he was on the floor a few seconds after the door closed. They greeted each other with a long, passionate kiss, and then Luke easily picked Josie up in his arms and carried her into the bedroom, gently laying her on the bed. Luke stepped back and undressed. What he said to Josie was true. He really preferred mature women to women of his age. He often recalled the women he had provided services to and the services they had provided in return. Although Josie, at 59, was somewhat older than his usual partners, she looked closer to 50 and still retained a youthful energy. Josie admired Luke's physique as he undressed. He wasn't too muscular, but he was strong and in good shape, which Ray hadn't had for a long time, mostly because of his age, of course. Damn it, she thought. Put him out of her mind. This is not a competition. She hadn't realized how much Ray's game had changed over the years. Obviously, this is to be expected with age and it happens so gradually that you just don't think about it. You don't think about it unless at some point in your life you have the opportunity to compare them. True, she and Ray hadn't had actual intercourse in a long time, but it was still fresh enough in her memory that she realized the difference between it and what Luke was doing to her. No, it was too good to refuse. Their relationship lasted about two hours. Luke took a shower, and Josie took out the bed and started the laundry. He helped her put new bedclothes on the bed and left. Josie climbed into the shower herself and thoroughly washed herself inside and out. She knew it was hard for Ray, and it was important that nothing reminded him of it. She did not allow Luke to mark her in any way and tried to make sure that there were no traces in the house. By 12.30, Josie was more than satisfied that the house and her body were in pristine condition and ready to meet her husband, who should be home at any moment. She enjoyed herself, satisfied her needs, and was ready to devote all her attention to Ray for the rest of the week. He usually came home between 12.30 and 13 o'clock. When he didn't come by 2 o'clock, 
she was worried, but not too much yet. By three o'clock, she began to worry and tried to call him on his cell phone. The call went straight to voicemail. By 5 a.m., after making several calls and sending several unanswered text messages, she began to worry a lot. Finally, at 7 a.m., after sitting for another two hours without an answer from her husband, she called her daughter. She explained the situation, and within minutes, Kristen and her husband, along with Josie's granddaughters, were in the living room. Eric went to the country club to get some information. All they could tell him was that Ray had been there and left a few hours ago. Kristen called the police and found out that there are no records of incidents involving Ray, and at the moment, they cannot file an official missing person report, but they'll write down his name in case they find out something. Kristen thanked them and hung up, not sure if anything would come of it. There was no one else to call. Josie didn't know any of the men he played golf with, let alone the fact that she didn't have any of their phone numbers. There was nothing to do but wait. It was almost 11 p.m. when Julia, who was sitting in front of the house, reported that she had just seen the headlights on the driveway. Then, perhaps sensing the inevitability of confrontation, she and her sister ran upstairs to their mom's old bedroom. Eric, who always got up early, had long since gone to bed in Leo's old room. Only Josie and Kristen were left to meet Ray. Ray walked through the front door, not surprised to see his wife spewing fire in the hallway, and only a little surprised to see his daughter loitering in the living room. He'd seen her car on the street, but he thought maybe she'd leave him and Josie alone. She must be willing to do anything to make her mother look weird. Where have you been? Josie spat. I was playing golf, Ray replied calmly. No more than 12 o'clock. You weren't there anymore. It's true. After the golf, I had lunch at the club. Their chicken piccata is pretty good. Then I went to watch a new Dwayne Johnson movie. It's a bit formulaic, but I liked it. Thereafter, Damn it, Raymond, I don't want to know all the places you went. Well, you asked where I was, Ray muttered. I want to know why you didn't come home after golf as usual and why you didn't answer the phone. I didn't answer the phone because my phone didn't ring, he replied, showing his wife that his phone was turned off. And I didn't come home because I wasn't going to be in this house at the same time as your boyfriend. This is ridiculous, Raymond. Nothing has changed. We finished and I cleaned the whole house long before you finished playing golf. There was no reason for you to come home late at all, let alone be away all day. That's how you see it, Josephine. I just wasn't going to even risk being exposed to it. Byproducts. Let me say again that I will not be in this house at the same time. It's late now, and I'm going to bed. Ray walked past his wife, looked intently at his daughter, but said nothing as he walked into the bedroom. He expected one of the women to follow him, but none of them did. As he was getting ready for bed, he heard other voices in the hallway and realized that Kristen's whole family was gathered in the house. Great. By the time Josie said goodbye to everyone and entered the bedroom, Ray was already asleep, or at least pretending to be asleep. Josie couldn't be sure. She thought about waking him up so they could talk some more, but instead she just went to bed. The next weekend was about the same, although this time there were no calls or messages. Josie just accepted that Ray would be gone all day and took the opportunity to completely clean up the house. However, later, Josie began to worry that she would be home alone and called Kristen, who agreed to come and keep her company until Ray returned home. Eric and their daughters stayed at home. Ray arrived again around 11 a.m. and was surprised to see Kristen's car parked at the curb. He wondered if another confrontation was coming. He walked through the door, but only to be greeted by his wife's pleasant greeting a kiss on the cheek, and a smiling daughter in the background. Why don't you change your clothes, sweetheart? Then you can tell me what you've been doing all day, Josie said, leaving Ray somewhat confused. Josie went to the kitchen to get everyone a drink, and Ray went to the bedroom to change. The only conclusion he could draw was that her lover had taken good care of her today, so she was in a particularly relaxed and good mood. He changed into his pajamas and returned to the living room where Kristen seemed ready to leave, but apparently was waiting for him. Dad, I know it's hard for you, but I just wanted to say how wonderful it is that you show your love for mom by letting her do this. It really made a difference. By letting her? Ray thought. Is that how they see it? Now I want to tell you something, Kristen. This is the last conversation on this topic. Last. Make sure everyone knows that. Of course, Dad, I understand. It's hard to get it out of your head if people are constantly talking about it. I'll tell everyone. With that, 
she kissed her father on the cheek and left. A moment later, Josie came in with drinks for both of them. It seemed to Ray that she couldn't bring drinks for a long time, and he wondered if this was planned so that Kristen could tell him how wonderful he was. This went on for several months. Josie continued to enjoy a physical relationship with Luke, and Ray found himself experiencing and enjoying some new activities. He still played golf every Saturday morning and, of course, watched all the movies that interested him, but at the same time tried to diversify his activities. He played bowling, mini golf, and even tried his hand at arcade games. He wasn't very good at it, but he was having fun. Life at home was quite normal, although the topic of Luke was carefully avoided. They had dinner together every night and had pleasant, if ordinary, conversations. The intimacy they shared had changed. Josie, convinced that her relationship with Luke had no effect on her marriage, continued to express her love and affection to her husband. And if she noticed that he rarely reciprocated, she did not say anything. Maybe Josie just got too comfortable in this situation. Maybe the fact that Ray didn't talk about Luke at all made her believe that he was more comfortable with everything than he really was. Anyway, when Thanksgiving came, Ray was in for a shock. Mom, Luke has arrived. It was Kristen speaking from the front of the house. Ray was sitting in an armchair reading a newspaper, yes, the print version, very old school, when he heard this message. If he had been drinking anything, he would have spat it out on the floor. Oh, good, his wife noticed. He wasn't sure if he would definitely come. Ray pressed the lever that lowered the footrest and jumped, as far as he could, off the chair, which attracted Josie's attention. What the hell is he doing here? Ray sputtered, completely annoyed. I invited him to Thanksgiving, Josie replied as calmly as she could. He has no family in the city, and he has nowhere to go. I told you I wouldn't be in this house at the same time as him. You know that's why I'm not home all day on Saturdays. And now you're inviting him to my house for a family holiday? This is my house too, Raymond. This is no different from when the children were growing up and their friends came to us. It's just dinner, and I expect you to be on your best behavior. Josie turned and headed for the front door to greet the guest, effectively pushing her husband away and proud of herself for standing up for her own. Well, they were lovers, of course, but she also considered Luke her friend. And it seemed to her that this was quite an appropriate gesture towards a friend. She met Luke at the door and introduced him to her children and their spouses, as well as her granddaughters. Taking his hand, she led him into the living room to greet her husband. She started talking even before she turned the corner. Luke, you remember mine? But Ray was no longer there, or at least not in the chair he had occupied just a few minutes ago. She looked around but didn't see him and assumed he might have gone to the bathroom. She was heading into the bedroom when she heard the engine start to open the garage door. She got to the kitchen garage door just in time to see the door start to come down and Ray's car drive away. Was it Dad who was leaving? Kristen asked her mom. Yes, it was him. Where's he going? Who knows? Josie replied irritably, heading to her bedroom to collect her thoughts. Luke approached Kristen as Josie was closing her bedroom door. Is there anything I can do? Wouldn't it be better if I left? He asked. No, Luke, it's okay. This is your father's problem, not yours. You are always welcome here. I just don't want to be the cause of problems, but if you're sure. We know, Luke, and we appreciate it. The family and Luke chatted over food. Luke, as a new person, was the center of attention, but he also showed an interest in family. After the meal, he joined Leo and Eric to watch football while the ladies went shopping. No one noticed Ray's car drive by. The holiday has long been over. It was nearing 10 p.m., the house was cleaned, the dishes were washed. The ladies returned from a shopping trip with a few things, but nothing special. Leo and Eric fell asleep on the couch, and Ray was still nowhere to be seen. Kristen woke up her husband and children and told them to go home, intending to wait with her mother and stay the night. She always kept a few things here, nightgowns and a change of clothes, so that she could spend the night at her parents' house if necessary. Leo and Rebecca also left while Kristen waited with her mother. Ray finally arrived at almost midnight. He hoped Josie had already gone to bed, but she was waiting for him. She started to move towards him, but instead of stopping, as he usually did, he just walked past her. He went to his chair and continued reading the newspaper, as he had been doing before he was interrupted. If he thought Josie would back down, he was wrong. Where have you been all day? Practically, she screamed. I went to Danny's for Thanksgiving dinner, and then I spent the rest of the day at the movies. We had a great lunch right here, Raymond. 
why on earth did you go to Danny's? It's not about the food, Josephine. It's about the company. I can't believe that a 64-year-old man can't be polite to a guest I invited to our house. I would never treat a person you invited like that. I told you I wouldn't be in this house at the same time as him, ever. I didn't mean that only when he's here to take care of your so, called needs. I meant always, and you knew about it, but you did it anyway. It was just dinner, Ray. Maybe for you, Ray said, and then held up the newspaper between them, signaling the end of the conversation. It took about five minutes of silence before Kristen, his own daughter and a clear traitor to the cause, knelt next to him on the floor. Dad, please try to understand that he means a lot to her. She doesn't love him or anything, but she cares about him and didn't want him to be alone on holiday. And you don't see a problem with mom's boyfriend becoming part of the family? He's not part of the family, Dad, but he's the man in her life, a friend like any other friend. Ray knew it was a lost cause. Of course, Kristen, I understand. I hope so, Dad. See you later. After kissing him on the cheek, Kristen left. Josie didn't show up again that evening, and when Ray finally got up wearily from his chair and went into the bedroom, she was already asleep. Thanksgiving seemed to be a turning point, at least in some ways. There was practically no sign of affection, as Ray and Josie became neighbors rather than anyone else. Josie believed that her decision to take a lover was justified because Ray was not doing a good job and regarded Ray's reaction as selfish and driven by his own ego. Ray, on the other hand, regarded Josie's choice as a betrayal of their marriage and life together. He managed to treat her kindly, and they communicated the way they needed to. But the love that had been built over more than 40 years of relationship was fading. When Josie said on Christmas Eve that she needed to do some last-minute shopping, Ray didn't say anything, even though she hadn't had to do last-minute shopping in years. He knew where she was going and he didn't have to follow her or track her phone. The look in her eyes told him everything he needed to know. Whether she just wanted to exchange gifts or wanted something more, he did not know, but he knew that she would have a personal holiday with him. On New Year's Eve, Ray still kissed his wife at midnight, although this kiss did not have the passion that in previous years. Josie was disappointed that she couldn't express anything to Luke, but the next day she called him anyway to wish him a happy New Year. On the eve of Valentine's Day, Ray had planned a nice dinner at an upscale seafood restaurant, and Josie was thrilled at the prospect of a holiday. This led her to think that maybe her husband was coming back to her. But Ray had vague suspicions. Josie's desire to spend the holidays with her lover made him think about Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day after all, and Ray doubted Josie would miss it without seeing Luke. So he decided to leave the office for a while and watch his house. He parked at the end of the street to get a good view of the front door and the surrounding streets. Of course, he saw Luke park around the corner and walk down the sidewalk. Ray half expected him to just walk into the house, but he knocked and waited for Josie to let him in. Ray doubted they were just going to talk. It was their personal Valentine's Day celebration. Obviously, they were no longer just buddies. Dinner that evening was low-key. Josie went to him with a positive attitude and hope for a resumption of relations with her husband but the elated mood that he had shown in the last few days disappeared. Josie was disappointed but tried to make the most of it, wondering what could have led to such a change. Since they didn't have small children, Easter was basically just an excuse for a big family dinner. They hid a few eggs around the yard, but they were big plastic eggs that usually had a gift card or something in them. It was just a little fun to get into the holiday spirit. To Ray's relief, Luke wasn't invited, or at least he didn't show up. Josie had at least complied with that request after that Thanksgiving fiasco, but Ray knew that she came to him on days other than Saturday mornings, and perhaps more often than he had anticipated. She arranged it for Valentine's Day, and of course could have done it on other days. After the morning festivities were over, Ray announced that he was going to lie down. True, he was a little tired, but there was nothing he couldn't handle. He just wanted to avoid having to sit and chat with the family that betrayed him. He couldn't avoid them altogether but he could limit the amount of time he spent with them. It was a beautiful day, and he opened one of the windows that overlooked the backyard. A cool breeze blew into the room. Unfortunately, so did Josie and Kristen's conversation. So, how's Luke? He heard his daughter's question. Shh, not too loud. I don't want your father to hear. Okay, okay, Kristen replied, lowering her voice, but still loud enough for Ray to hear her. I just can't believe that my mom has a boyfriend 10 years younger than me. He's not my boyfriend, Kristen. He's just... Come on, Mom. 
You make love to him too, three times a week, and the two of you also go out for lunch. You may not want to use the word boyfriend, but he's still like that. Okay, well, he's my boyfriend. I just want to be attentive to your father's feelings. I know, Mom, and I love Dad too, you know, and I don't want him to get hurt. But let's be honest, he's an old man, and you're a young woman. He's only five years older than me, Kristen. By physical age, yes, but you're an active woman, and he can barely get through the day without taking a nap. You deserve it. To be honest, I'm a little jealous that you're going through the whole dating process again. Does anyone else know? I mean, is it more than just on Saturday mornings? Leo, Eric, and Rebecca know. I don't tell the girls about it. Does everyone agree with this? Leo and Eric don't see this as a problem. They agree with me that you should be allowed to satisfy your needs, since Dad can't do it. Rebecca is the only one who thinks it's wrong, but she doesn't want to see Dad hurt, so she promises she won't say anything. What Dad doesn't know won't hurt him. Listening to the depths to which his wife's betrayal had sunk, and how his daughter sincerely supported the fact that her mother had a boyfriend, ignoring what she said about him, Ray felt the last traces of love and affection for them leave his heart. Although he had made many preliminary preparations, he refrained from going too far because of his love for his family and his long marriage to Josie. Now it is time to start the final process in earnest. Ray slowly closed the window and climbed into bed. Over the next couple of months, Ray's relationship with his wife and daughter deteriorated. Things were no better with his son and son-in-law, but he tried to establish a relationship with Rebecca and his granddaughters based on Kristen's words about Rebecca and the belief that the granddaughters were simply too young to truly understand the situation. Mother's Day. Every family has its own traditions. For this family, Mother's Day was an upscale brunch at a local French-style restaurant. The food and service were excellent, and the prices reflected that. When the children were young, Ray took his family to celebrate Mother's Day and his wife's day. When the children grew up and started working, they took responsibility for the celebration. They did the same with Father's Day. The peculiarity of this family was that the second parent did not participate in the celebration. Many years ago, Ray stopped going to Mother's Day and Josie stopped going to Father's Day. They let the children celebrate with the appropriate parent and expressed their feelings later. But Ray had some kind of premonition caused by the events of the last few months. So, although he usually used his free time to read or do something else, this morning he got dressed and went to a restaurant. Josie had been gone for about 30 minutes, so he knew she would be there. He wasn't going to participate in the brunch or even make anyone aware of his presence. Moreover, he doubted that he would have to get out of the car at all. He drove through the parking lot of the restaurant, easily found Kristen and Eric's car, then Josie's car, then Leo and Rebecca's car. He had already begun to hope that he was mistaken until he saw what he was looking for, but hoped that he would not find it hidden in the corner of the parking space. Luke's car. Ray had seen her quite a few times and remembered the number. His wife, or maybe his daughter, invited a lover. The guy, as you like, wives can take part in a family event, knowing that Ray will not be there. Despite everything that has been done so far, and despite the fact that Ray's love for his wife has, in fact, faded, this new betrayal infuriated him, and if he was going to moderate his actions before, now he had no such intentions. Ray returned to his home, picked up his golf clubs, and went to the local golf course. He used several buckets, losing count. By the end, he was exhausted. The blows were not very long-range and not very accurate, but it became easier for him. He drove home, ready to take a nap. They considered him useless, unable to live a day without sleep. He would have let them continue to think so. Josie greeted him as he walked through the door. He wondered if she was having a private celebration with her boyfriend, although, to tell the truth, he no longer cared. It still hurt, but it wasn't something to worry about at all. As he entered the house, he wondered if she would admit to inviting Luke if the opportunity presented itself. How was the Mother's Day celebration with the family? Ray asked, putting a slight emphasis on family. It was wonderful, Ray. Thanks for asking. I had a great time with the kids. Josie replied. She didn't mention Luke. Did this mean that she and the rest of the family considered him a relative? Or did she just decide not to mention him? Ray decided he would never find out. He went to his bedroom and dozed off. Soon it was the 4th of July again. Josie was always in a good mood, and Ray, of course, knew why. He'd been hanging around her for almost a year now, and no doubt Josie thought she'd succeeded. She had a husband who supported her, and a young boyfriend whom she met several times a week. 
Her life, in her opinion, was almost perfect. Luke turned out to be a great guy, except for his general reluctance to make love to her. Since Ray no longer wanted to make love to her in any way, it was the only thing missing in her life. But it was something she was willing to endure. Luke got a new job where he worked in the evenings, which allowed him to spend several afternoons a week with Josie. They didn't pay much, but she wasn't with him for his money. Not wanting to rub Ray's nose in it, well, to be completely honest, she just didn't want to be caught. They avoided Josie's bedroom on all occasions except Saturday mornings. This meant that they used Luke's apartment or borrowed housing from friends if there was no such opportunity. After all, he has roommates. The most difficult thing for her was to exclude Luke from participating in events. She didn't bring it up with Ray anymore and didn't think he would change his mind. That was the only thing she was unhappy about. At first, she hoped and still hopes that Ray and Luke could become, if not friends, then at least buddies. They gave her different things, so in her opinion, they were not competitors. She spent her days with Luke and her evenings and weekends, well, most of them, with Ray. She couldn't understand why it couldn't work. So, reluctantly, she didn't invite Luke to a family barbecue and a trip to the fireworks. The family arrived early to help with the cooking. Ray tried to be visible and active so that later there would be no doubt that he was tired. He kept a close eye on the crowd, wondering if Josie would drag Luke through. But he never showed up. As the day went on, Ray pretended to get more and more tired. Okay, not all of it was a sham, but a lot of it was for sure. Maybe he was pretending too much, because Josie seemed to notice it and came up to him. Honey, why don't you lie down to rest before the fireworks? She suggested softly. The hardest thing about this whole situation was that he knew that Josie loved him and genuinely cared about him, and that made it even harder to do what he was going to do. I'm not going to the fireworks, so I decided to just enjoy the day with my family and go to bed early, Ray replied. Are you sure? You missed it last year, and before that you were always looking forward to it, Josie remarked, genuinely worried that he would miss it again. I'm sure. I guess I'm just getting old, but I'm sure everyone will have fun without me. Okay, if you're sure. As soon as she left him, Josie immediately went in search of Kristen. Ray watched as she made her way through the crowd, looking for her daughter. Josie, he suddenly realized, was trying to figure out if he was planning to attend the fireworks, and there was only one reason that could be a priority. She planned to invite Luke to join them at the fireworks. Not that it mattered, but the last betrayal stung. As the evening wore on, the guests began to disperse until only family members remained. Josie, Kristen, Leo, and Eric stopped by at one point to ask if he really didn't want to join them for the fireworks, and everyone expressed that they would miss him when he said he would stay at home. Ray saw it for what it was and understood that his family was lost to him. As the family prepared to leave for the fireworks, Ray swallowed his anger and tried to communicate with every member of the family. No matter what happened over the past year, he has a lot of pleasant memories of how they spent time together, and he will miss those times. He hugged his granddaughters the most tightly. Ray watched melancholically as the family happily climbed into Kristen's minivan. It was clear that no one even missed him. He put them out of his mind and went about his business. The family returned a little later than usual, giving Josie time to be alone with Luke. He thanked them for the invitation, especially since he had no family or close relatives nearby. Although no one except Josie spent much time with him, they began to consider him a member of the extended family and were delighted with how happy he made Josie. They said goodbye in the park, as he obviously could not return to the house with them. After entering the house, they tried to be quiet, not wanting to disturb Ray. They poured themselves a drink and gathered at the table in the dining room to chat a little. It must have been 30, 45 minutes before Josie remembered Ray and asked her son to go check on him. Leo obediently got up from the table and slowly walked into the bedroom. He didn't find Ray asleep in bed, but he found that the bedspread was pulled back, exposing the snow-white sheets underneath. Josie always insisted on white sheets. Leo found Ray's wedding ring and a USB flash drive on these sheets. It didn't bode well. He's not there, Leo said, coming out of the bedroom. What do you mean he's not there? His mother asked. That's right, Mom. No one was sleeping in the bed and I found this on the sheets next to his pillow. Not fully believing her son's words, Josie went into the bedroom and looked for herself. And the truth is, the bed was not used, and there was no sign of her husband. When she returned to the living room, Eric was already plugging the USB stick into his laptop to see what was on it. When the contents became visible, 
There was only one file in the list, although it was quite large. Eric looked at his mother and she nodded back at him. He double-clicked on the file. The computer's video player came to life and Eric expanded the image to full screen. At first it was just a blank wall, but they could hear voices. After a few seconds, Ray walked up to the camera. Is the recording going on? He asked the invisible operator. Yes, a female voice replied. Ray looked at the camera. Good evening, everyone. If I calculated the time correctly, you are watching this a little after 22 o'clock, having just returned from the fireworks. Everyone reflexively looked at the clock next to them and saw that it was almost 23 o'clock because they did not bother to check on Ray when they returned home. Now when you watch this video, I am sitting on a plane that flies through the air and will not land until it is far outside the United States. If you're interested, I'm not coming back. No, Josie screamed, bursting into tears. You betrayed me, the video continued. Each of you, my wife, who has enjoyed my love and support for more than 40 years, who has not had to work a day in her life except for raising our children, threw me away like garbage for a guy half my age. And when I had the audacity to object, she turned the whole family against me. I would have thought that 40 years of loyalty, dedication, loyalty, and support would mean more to you, Josephine. I think I deserve it. Your desires, and I think we all know that they were actually desires, not needs. But your desires had to take a back seat to my feelings. It was bad enough that you were doing this behind my back, but the fact that you forced the family to take your side was even worse. That day, I felt as if I had been stabbed seven times in the heart. Christine, your betrayal was as bad as your mother's betrayal. You were always daddy's daughter when you were a kid. We did everything together. The fact that you supported your mother in cheating on me in adultery with your own father broke my heart even more than what your mother did. Even if I hadn't heard from you that I'm an old man who doesn't deserve a faithful wife, my heart would have been completely broken. I didn't say that, Kristen said aloud. Never. Leo, Eric, you must be the biggest idiots in the world. Do you even realize that you just gave your wives permission to cheat on you? Leo, I doubt Rebecca is capable of this. But some of what I've heard from my daughter should worry you, Eric. All she has to do is find a reason to say that you don't satisfy her, and she'll leave. She had already told her mother how jealous she was of her. Eric looked at Kristen, who shook her head negatively as Ray's words poured out of the speaker. No, baby, I've never said that, and I wouldn't do it. You've already said that this is quite normal for Josie, unless you meant that it's okay just because you weren't cheated on. Isn't that right, Eric? Were you completely okay with cheating on someone else? I bet when it's your turn, you won't be so accommodating anymore and I'm willing to bet that Kristen already denies that she would do something like that, but ask her if she thinks it would be wrong for her. Why was it okay for her mother? Her answer will be eloquent. Eric paused the video and looked at his wife. Did you say you're jealous of your mom? Finally, he asked. I don't remember exactly what I said. I only know that I was glad that my mother was going through this stage of a new relationship acquaintance in order to find out for herself again. So do you want to get to know someone again? Eric continued. No, baby, please don't make too much of it, okay? I love you, and I don't want to be with anyone else. Only if I can't perform anymore, right? Honey, can we talk about this later? Right now we need to focus on mom. Okay, but it's not over yet. Eric pressed the play button again, and Ray continued. I didn't want to stay in a marriage in which my wife cheated on me every week and I certainly wasn't going to stay as soon as I found out that it had increased to several times a week. I'm sorry, Josephine, but you weren't anywhere near as reserved and delicate as you thought you were. And invite him to the Mother's Day celebration? It was just tasteless. As you might expect, I do not intend to tell you where I went, but I can assure you that even if you find me, there is nothing you can do about it. I should also mention the financial situation that I have left for you. I took most of our money because I intend to live out the rest of my life in retirement, as a reward to myself for putting everyone else first for most of my adult life. Josephine, I left you a house that, as you know, is paid for and worth several hundred thousand. My lawyer will contact you and help you arrange the sale, if that's what you want. I also left about $400,000 in the bank. That's $10,000 for every successful year you've given me. I'm afraid there have been no loans in the last 12 months. None of you need worry about me. After taking the rest of our assets, including investment accounts, I got an almost eight-figure bank balance, so I'll be fine. 
not that I really thought any of you would be worried. I think the way I've been treated over the last year clearly shows how you all still feel about me. Oh, and if you're worried about me spending my golden years alone, don't worry about that either. I already have a companion, and she's sitting next to me on the plane right now. But let me introduce you. Deborah. A face matching the female voice appeared from behind the camera and got into the frame. Attention, this is Deborah. She is the one who will help me spend your inheritance. Hi, everyone said an attractive brunette who looked to be in her 50s waving back at the camera. Deborah and I have been keeping close company for about the last four, five months after I told her what my wife was doing. Nothing special, just spending a lot of time together and confirming how compatible we are. But Josephine, you probably remember Deborah. You've met her a few times. We have been working together for over 30 years since she was hired in the marketing department. She took early retirement to join me in my new home. We've been close friends all this time, and the best part is that her needs are nothing more than a desire for intimacy. Hugs, kisses, and maybe a few other personal things are more than suitable for her. I'm looking forward to it. Everyone looked at Josie to see how she took this revelation, and it was clear from her expression that she didn't take it very well. Eric paused the video. Mom, are you okay? Leo asked. No, Leo, I'm definitely not okay, but let's just get this over with. Eric started the video again. Josephine, Ray said, his tone becoming more serious. I've loved you since the day we met. If someone had told me that you could treat me like that, I would have knocked him out before he finished talking. I was looking forward to spending the last years of my life together and receiving visits from our children, grandchildren and even great-grandchildren. I'm so disappointed that your physical needs have ruined this for us. For me. For your sake, I hope it was worth it. You should have enough money to last for a long time especially if you sell the house. If you need more, I am sure that the children who supported your novel will also want to support you financially. Now that I think about it, it was thanks to my money that they graduated from college and got a good job, so I think that's my merit as well. It's been a terrible year and it's been getting worse. I knew at least about the extra time you spent with him every week. I could have ended this a few months ago, but I liked the idea of declaring my independence on Independence Day, so I waited. I guess there's a part of me that will always love you, or at least what we had. I wish things were different, but somewhere along the way you forgot that our marriage is us, not you and me. I've always tried not to make choices that would benefit me and hurt you, like you did with Luke. You probably thought that I would somehow come to terms with this. Maybe because I've always sacrificed myself for you before. I don't know. No matter for what reason, it has been done and cannot be undone. For your sake, I hope it was worth it. Goodbye, Josephine. I'm going to miss you and what we could have had. Ray was looking directly at the camera when the screen went blank. Everyone in the room was in tears, although some more than others. None of them thought that Josie and Luke's relationship would alienate Ray. In the past, he had always given in to Josie, and it was thought that it would be the same in this case. Deep down, no one thought he had the guts to do anything but accept it. Tired, they all stayed the night at Josie's house. She needed their support. Rebecca was cleaning the kitchen when the phone rang. The only calls she received were from her husband, Leo, or some unwanted calls. She looked at the screen. The number was blocked. It seemed strange enough to her, and she decided to answer. Hello? Rebecca, this is Ray. Oh my God, Ray, how are you? Where are you? I'm fine, Rebecca. I'm just fine. I will keep silent about where I am for now. More importantly, how are you? I'm fine, Dad. But I have some news. I'm pregnant. Congratulations. For how long? Just a couple of months. We found out about it right after you left. I can't believe you've been gone for almost three weeks. Yes, time flies. By the way, thanks for calling me Dad. I thought I had lost that title. Not with me. You know, Dad, I owe you an apology. I had to speak out. When everyone bumped into you that day and you asked our opinion... I had to say that I thought it was wrong, but I was new to the family and I was afraid. I had a hunch, but I don't think it would have mattered anyway. Josie and Kristen seemed to really want this to happen. Consider yourself forgiven. Thanks, Dad. It was very important to me, especially since I hope that both grandfathers will be in my child's life. And, will you be in his life? Let's see, honey. I'm not going back to the States, but maybe we can figure something out. I'd really like to see you and the baby. So how are things going there? In a word, it's stressful. Josie is not herself most of the time, 
although this does not prevent her from seeing Luke several times a week. Kristen and Eric have problems. They're keeping it a secret, but I think your comments about her having an excuse to cheat on him hit a nerve. How are you and Leo? Everything is fine with us. We're just getting married, so it's still fresh. I think Kristen and Eric have been married for so long. I don't know, it probably just makes them both a little more careful. The girls, however, are devastated. Really? This surprises me. You guys have always been so close. They miss the time they spent with you. I understand. I noticed Kristen's obvious influence when they answered. Listen, could you get everyone at your place tonight? I think I'm ready to talk to them. I don't think that's going to be a problem, Dad. Then we'll talk. That evening, the whole family gathered in Leo and Rebecca's living room. Rebecca made it clear that Luke wasn't invited. She made sandwiches and everyone ate a little, but they were too preoccupied to eat much. At 8 o'clock, the phone rang, and Rebecca turned on the speakerphone. Hi, Dad, it's all here. Thanks, honey. Just so everyone knows, Deborah is in the room with me, too. Let's all try to be polite and have a conversation, not have an altercation. Do you agree? The assembled family members expressed general agreement. Good. I thought we should talk, but I wanted to wait until some time had passed. Of course, I contacted Rebecca first. I did this because some of the things I overheard made me think that she didn't agree with it as much as the rest of you. Leo, congratulations on the baby. Thanks, Dad. I will try to meet the standards of fatherhood that you have set, and I'm not just saying this. As they say, the best thing you can do for your children is to love their mother. Remember this, and you will succeed. Alice and Julia? Yes, Grandfather, his granddaughter said almost in unison. Girls, I was disappointed that you supported your grandmother in this, but your Aunt Rebecca and Deborah convinced me that you may have been under excessive pressure and that you lacked the life experience to understand the dynamics of adulthood and 40 years of marriage. I still have your emails and phone numbers, so we'll talk about it later if you don't mind. Of course, Grandpa, Allison replied. We just miss you. I miss you too. Why don't you go and find something to do while the others are talking? The girls said goodbye and went about their business. Before leaving, they still stopped and hugged Grandma. So, Ray continued, does anyone have anything they're just dying to say? Ray, honey, please, Josie began, not surprising anyone. Please come back. We can get through this. If you had told me that you were really going to leave me, we would have decided everything. Why did it go so far, Josephine? I told you I wouldn't accept it, and you turned to your family for support. Then you started inviting him to family events and seeing him several times a week. You replaced me with him when you and I were barely roommates. You let it happen, and I finally got tired of it. But you didn't say anything else. I thought you'd accepted it, realized it was easy, what I was doing. It drove a wedge into our marriage, and there was no other way out but that. From the moment I found out what you were doing and you chose him over me, our marriage was doomed. I'm really sorry, Ray. Can't we? No, Josephine, we can't. Even if I wanted to, and I don't want to. I made a commitment to Deborah, and I intend to keep it. What about your commitment to me? You took it first. Yes, it is. And I would still be there doing it. But as far as I understand, when you broke yours, you freed me from yours and gave me the opportunity to take a new one. Which I did. Everything was quiet and only the sounds of Josie's sobbing broke the silence. Josie, Ray said quietly, I'm sorry, but there's no point in having this conversation. Whether you wanted to or not, you threw me aside. There is no turning back. Without saying another word, Josie got up and left the room to hide in Kristen and Eric's room. Kristen attacked. That's very nice, Dad. Did you call just to hurt Mom and make her cry? Is it because your ego couldn't accept that another man was making her feel better than you? I suppose that's how you feel about it, Kristen. Eric, how is your ego? Is it ready to accept that another man will make your wife feel better than you? Kristen suddenly stopped her attacks under her husband's gaze. Throughout their marriage, Kristen was the dominant partner, and Eric, like many husbands, tried to get along with her. But there has been a significant shift in the last few weeks, and Kristen has realized that her marriage is in serious danger. You can't support another woman's right to cheat on her husband without feeling at least a little guilt by association. No, Ray, that's definitely not the case. And you were right. I've never thought about it in such terms. After all this, my wife and I had some pretty serious problems. I understand, and let me say this, whatever it takes. Fight for your marriage before it's too late. 
You love each other, but you've come to take each other for granted. I noticed this even before all this mess started. Don't let this put an end to everything, but let it be a catalyst for change. You are a team. Remember this. Josie didn't do it. There was a long silence, mostly because no one else had anything to say at that moment. Then, in a voice almost like a little girl's, Dad, Kristen said, is it okay if I talk to you alone? If everyone else doesn't mind, then I don't mind either. Kristen looked around. No one objected, so she picked up the phone and went into the spare room, closing the door. Dad, I'm scared. Eric talked about the divorce and at least the counseling. What should I do? You'll fix it, Kristen. That's what you're going to do. Your girls have grown up, at least mostly. Now return the time you spent raising them to your marriage. It's not free time, as your mother thought. Remember that you are not his boss. You are his partner. He's really angry. As soon as he started looking at it like I was giving myself free reign to cheat on him, he got so angry. He's always snapping at me, and I know he's wondering if I've done anything yet. Did you do it? No, Daddy, no. But I do not know how to convince him of this. All you can do is make sure there's no reason to be suspicious in the future. If you do this, questions about the past should disappear. Dad, I'm really sorry. Isn't there some way to fix this? I mean, you and Mom? It's too late for us, honey, but not for you. All right, Daddy, I love you. I love you too.